Bobo here from Brass Real Brothers. So uh, I'm doing something new and different here. I'm sure you can probably see my new setup I've got. Uh, I've been kind of working on this for a little bit, but I've been furloughed recently because of you know what, just like most of y'all have, or a lot of y'all watching this have, maybe even done this same thing. But I've always wanted to kind of start doing videos on my own and start posting stuff every day, develop some sort of a brand or channel on my own. And you know, I would never like really quit my job to do that, but now that I've kind of been forced into a position to where, you know what, I've got some time, let me follow my passion. Let me try to do something that I really enjoy doing and maybe give back, create some community with some people, uh, really just talk about what you and I love, which is movies, pop culture, nerdism, all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this and I'm calling it Hot Fresh Popcorn. So we're gonna see how it goes. Hope everything rolls, you know, smoothly. I want you guys to try to participate as much as you can. You know, send me comments down below. Uh, we can start chatting. I'm gonna to try to see how I can do some live streams. I'm just gonna be coming to y'all as much as I can, giving you how I feel about movies, whether it be uh, what influenced me, uh, what really showed me that maybe I like this genre. Uh, just anything that got me more into film and more into pop culture and nerd stuff, comic books, games, you know, whatever, mostly film, but I am gonna talk about the other stuff, you know, which a lot of films are inspired by other things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely wanting to kind of jump in that crew of the, the community that already exists out there. I wanna be a part of it, because I feel like I have a lot to offer. These aren't necessarily gonna be like re reviews covering the film start to finish, like plot lines and stuff like that necessarily, just gonna be about what it did for me, what it did to the industry, why this film is so important and why it's important to me and why it might be important to you guys. And like I said, if y'all wanna like send me comments down below so we can start some sort of communication going forward, I'll review movies that you guys want me to talk about. I'll maybe talk about how it did inspire me or if I haven't seen it, I can watch it and then show you, wow, this did something for me again or it didn't do anything for me. But as always, we're all allowed to disagree we're all allowed to have our own opinion. This is strictly for fun, for you guys, for me. You know, I'd like to make this more of my life, but I'm not trying to get out there and make any waves. I'm not trying to hurt anyone with any of my comments or anything, my views on film or anything like that. This is a community for everybody. Be a part of something good going on. So I decided to do this. So with that being said, I'm gonna call it Hot Fresh Popcorn. This is my first one. Uh, so. I decided I'm going to start out with Batman, 1989. You want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. It's the film that truly solidified like my love for the way films are today, the way we all go to the theater, that excitement, that movie magic that you love. Everybody has a movie that, that did that for them. This is the one that did it for me. I was already into movies. I mean, I was already into some things like, um, you know, I'd seen Wizard of Oz, um, you know, anything that was family oriented and, you know, that you could see with the family and then at the end it had some sort of moral tone. This was the first movie I ever saw that was dark. Uh, it was a superhero movie, but it's about the darkness of society. It's about the darkness of something that might happen to you and the way you deal with that darkness, the way you recover from it and the way you can either stop that movement of darkness or be a part of it too and then make things worse or you can stop it and be a part of the change and the better, which is what I really like about the Batman movie. So Batman, 1989, made by Warner Brothers, directed by Tim Burton. So Tim Burton was the first name I remember seeing on the screen and like noticing a director being like directed by one it's right in the middle of the screen really huge and yellow print in that first opening scene so let's talk about that first opening scene that opening that so batman 1989 from the get-go is like getting on a ride and, and then it just doesn't stop so as soon as the screen hits after the trailers were over or whatever from the get-go, it was a ride. Even before the movie started, after the trailers, there was the Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny cartoon talking about all the things you can and can't do. It was his first time they'd ever really done like this cool animation before a movie like that. Here's all you have to do, folks. Just send for this. <laughs> a new Warner Brothers catalog. Use it to order your Warner Brothers bull cap. So you had that, and then, hell, even on the home video release, which uh, I cried when that came out, we'll talk about that in a second. But on the home video release, 
they had this Diet Coke commercial where Alfred and Batman, Batman was calling him and he was on the way in the Batmobile and he had to, he had to need his Diet Coke. I can't remember exactly how it went. Hello. Gotham Corner Store? Yes, we seem to be down to our last Diet Coke. I mean, they had the marketing and the hype around this movie was crazy. Uh, I was already a Batman fan. I was already a superhero fan, but I was a kid. I was born in 1981. This movie came out in 1989. Um, I had always liked Batman in the comics. I had seen some cartoons here and there. I had seen the 1960s show. Um, so, but this, this dark element of Batman that it could exist, even if they try to portray that in the comics, I wasn't old enough to really grab onto the darkness that was rooted behind the character of Batman. Um, once I saw him in this movie by Tim Burton, not only was the whole movie dark, but it, Batman was in black all the way, just this black costume, no gray and blue, no, I mean, the yellow is there, but the yellow with the contrast of the black, it's just kind of intense and it's frightening. It almost says caution, watch out for this dude. Uh, so this movie, like literally it changed my life in the way that I just, I viewed movies and Batman. I never looked at Batman the way I looked at him after this movie. Uh, and the whole deal with him, really watching him with his parents getting killed in front of him, uh, that was very dark. I mean, if you rewatch this movie, I rewatched it just recently before doing this. I mean, the, the flashback scene where Batman's parents get killed right in front of him with the pearls and everything, and the guy that says, you know, you ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Tell me, kid. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? classic one-liner that, that, again, implemented itself into Hollywood. Like, you don't have to be a comic book fan to have heard or know that line. So, that scene is so dark. It just really, really, just as a kid, it, it was imagining losing my mom and dad. Who wouldn't saw the movie with me? And, you know, they, you know, they were supporting me. They knew how much I loved it. But I remember the hype around it, you know, watching this movie, excited with the friends in the theater. We're like, just talking about it. Oh, we're so pumped up. Like I said, they had been advertising it. And then once I saw this movie and saw how dark it was, I didn't like it any less. I liked it more. But it, it was so serious and it was real and it was deep and it was an adult movie that my mom and dad liked, that other people liked. And let's face it, up until this movie, you had Superman. There was really no other comic book superhero movies out. Superman was the one. So this was the second of the, f the first two ever released. Uh, I think that Superman was more of a phenomenon in the sense that nobody thought that that could be pulled off. But I think that Batman is really stuck with a lot of people and it, it really didn't really kick it off, but it started to kick off the superhero movie movement to where people are like, maybe we can do more of these. You know, they did sequels and then Spawn came out and all that. And we'll talk about all that another time. But all I know is from the hype, all of it, to the moment I got in the theater, to the end of the, the movie, it was beautiful every scene was sleek and just polished and high production values while looking gritty and smutty creating this like whole scene of gotham city that i never imagined could have existed all i'd seen gotham was in the comics drawn but the way tim burton captured it it was just mag it was glorious magnificent it was glorious from start to finish i remember when it was over with i was so pumped up I couldn't sleep that whole night. I was reading my comics. I was pretending to be Batman. I was trying to figure out how to make costumes about out of stuff. You know, I wanted to make the bat ears, the cape, everything. Every time I, I was doing that with my cape or with my sheet, you know, from my bed, it was, it took over my life. In fact, so much, it was, I was so emotionally attached to this movie that when it was coming out, I went to the Blockbuster every week, you know, my family, I was all up in the movies at this point yeah, because of this movie really, but going to Blockbuster, I knew that, oh, it's going to come out on video. We can rent it. You know, this is Blockbuster video, not even DVDs. But I was like, we can rent it. And I found it out. We called Blockbuster and he said, yes, it's coming out tomorrow. And so we went up there that next day. They were wrong. It was coming out the next week. I lost it. I started crying. Like you would have thought that like my parents died. I was so upset, crying so hard over Batman because I wanted to see that movie again. You know, you couldn't stream stuff. You couldn't get stuff like you could now. It was in the movie and once it was out of the movie, it took a while for it to become on VHS and even then renting it. You know, you had to stay in line and wait to get to the store. And if not, it was taken. They, you had to you just kept missing it, kept missing it. And buying movies weren't cheap back then either. They were a lot of, you know, like 50 bucks. 
So anyways, this movie just did it for me. It was glorious from start to finish. So I'm going to kind of get into some of the other things about why I like the movie and why it just was such a huge deal for me. So like, obviously you can see I'm a pop culture nerd, comic book guy, and I've got, you know, some Batman stuff there. I've got, you know, Batman hat on here. I've got some really cool stuff like the bat symbol tattooed into my arm, but it's like kind of scarred. But anyways, well, you, you, you can see that some other time. So this movie had everything as far as it was, had comedic elements. It had horror elements, you know, like the Frankenstein type stuff when Joker was in getting made by the butcher and cutting his face up and he's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. You know, it had the comedy elements to it, like when uh, Joker started infecting all the products around the city and all the beauty hygiene products and stuff, and they kept on showing the news anchors, and at first they looked kind of shabby. Then the next time they showed them, they were like, zits were all over their faces. They had dandruff on I mean, it was like, there's jokes like that in there, and of course the Joker's hilarious the whole time. I mean, the movie is full of one-liners, and I don't mean one-liners that are just fun for like the movie or fun for us comic nerds or fanboys. I'm talking like, lines that have implemented itself into Hollywood history. Like, everybody knows these lines. You are my number one guy. Remember, you are my number one guy. You can call me Joker. What are you? I'm Batman. Get those wonderful toys. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Wait till they get a load of me. Eckhart! Think about the future! Now you wanna get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. This town needs an enema. Also, there's, there's romance in there, which is obvious. Vicki Vale and Michael Keaton's character, Bruce Wayne. Vicki Vale, played by Kim Basinger, by the way. Uh, again, I was obsessed with her. Everything about this movie I was, I was obsessed with. And, and it definitely had the action. It had suspense, you know. There was like a, a story there of character development. I mean, it kind of covers all the stuff. There's moral tone to it. You know, do the, the better thing. Do what's right. We all know what's right. Just will you do it? And that's kind of one of, the, one of the things that Batman pushes, you know, there's revenge in there, but he uses that revenge for good. Some of the things that I think immediately the film just scratches off. It covers all kind of genres that any fan can attach itself to. You don't have to be a comic book fan just to really get into it like that. Um, as far as being true to the comic books, uh, it's actually, you know, true enough. It does pull from the comics and you know juggle things around a little bit. Uh, it's darkest in tone for sure, way darker than Batman had ever been. They do have some nods to the 1960s show in there, but I think that that's cool. It's out of respect. It doesn't like overshadow the tone of the film by any means. It's just some, the newspapers coming up and flashing on the screen real quick. Uh, when the villains shows them in their lair and stuff like that, you know, things can be a little tilted and crooked just like they were on the 60s show. So there's stuff like that that's in there that I, I really like because it's taking what we like from Batman from the past, but then adding something new and just still acknowledging that we learned from that, but we're doing our own thing now, you know? Let's talk about the cast. I mean, the cast in it is amazing. You got the Joker done by Jack Nicholson. I mean, Jack Nicholson, I literally, first movie I think I could really remember him being in, I was eight years old. I saw a lot of other stuff after that. Anything I saw Jack Nicholson in, I couldn't help but hear the Joker. Didn't matter what it was. Shining, magnificent. Love that movie. It's a horror film. I know that some people hate it if you like the book uh, more than the actual, you know, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick adaptation. I love that adaptation. I think it's fantastic. But when I'm watching Jack Torrance in that movie, all I can hear is Joker. <laughs> and I know that it's not Joker. I mean, I know that Jack Nicholson's phenomenal, but his voice is so iconic to that character for me. Because one, it was the first time I saw Jack Nicholson in a role. And... The Joker by Jack Nicholson. I'm not going to say it's the greatest performance by the, for the Joker yet, or the greatest um, depiction of the Joker by an actor, because I loved Heath Ledger. I even like some of the stuff that Jared Leto did. I mean, it was kind of a mess, but I like a lot of the guys. Cesar Romero is great, you know, but every Joker portrayal has been different from the last, which I like. I want them to keep doing that. I don't want to see that somebody, re, you know, regurgitate or copy what somebody else did. Uh, but then you got, you know, Carl Grissom in the movie, who's like a mob boss early on, played by Jack Palance, 
which is great. You know, he just chews up the scenes. Every time he's in anything, he just chews it up, even over Jack Nicholson. Uh, and some of my greatest, you know, my moments, again, one-liners are awesome in this when there's one by him in this. Get me Lieutenant Eckhart. Maybe you've got, you know, Kim Basinger, Vic Vicki Vale. Jerry Hall's in it for a second as the Joker's girlfriend when he's like Jack Napier. She plays Alicia, which by the way, that's also another horror element to the movie is Alicia. There's some moments where her face is all jacked up and then he's talking about how she threw herself out the window and it just, it takes your brain to a certain place if you allow it to, which is what the movie wanted you to do. Or wanted to do for you, rather. All those characters I think are, are great. You have Bob, one of the goons of Joker, one of his best friends, you know, that he just gets mad and just kills. They've known each other, it looks like, for what's been, you know, 30 something years because he was with him when he shot uh, Bruce's parents. Which, by that the way, that is one thing that they did do a little differently here, and they, they changed up. They, in the comics, the Joker has nothing to do with Batman's parents' death, with Bruce Wayne's, with Thomas Wayne and Martha. They get killed by a guy named Joe Chill. Uh, that, in the comics, it's just kind of a random thing. Here, they made it more of a kind of tie-around thing. I think it works for the movie. I think it's fun if you're watching a film and you're needing a film to hit all these different spots and then tie itself up at the end after about two and a half hours and really come to this awesome conclusion. It's cool. It works. I like it. Uh, and it doesn't bother me because they don't desecrate the character in any way. They don't take anything away from the character. They just kind of change some of the elements that made him into who he was. Uh, and another thing that's really cool about the movie is that you got Prince doing like a full-on soundtrack. Uh, Prince, God rest his soul, R.I.P. He not only was one of the first guys to do a full-on soundtrack for a movie, artists had done songs for movies and done music for movies, but to promote an album called Batman that was all original songs by Prince and to promote that successfully and it be like at the top of the billboards and everything along with the movie and both of them looked exactly the same. One was just a, a tape or a CD and the other one was a VHS but they had the Batman emblem on them. Uh, Bat Dance is the only song on there that I think is a little wacky. It's weird, it's just Prince. If you ever watch, wanna watch the video, he's all dressed up like a Two-Face character, but one half is Joker and one half is Batman. It's, it's weird. A uh, little extra trivia about that. A lot of people don't realize that that album was originally supposed to be a duo album between him and Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson was supposed to be kind of like the Batman and Prince was supposed to be like the Joker. And Michael Jackson was going to do like ballad hero songs and, the jo and Prince was going to do like Joker funk songs. That's not a lie. That's real information. Uh, it's kind of crazy that it happened, but Michael Jack Jackson got signed to Epic Records. He was doing his bad world tour and it just didn't work out. So Prince just did his own thing as he can. He was talented as, you know, a musical genius, a legend. So I thought that was pretty cool, the fact that, you know, he successfully made this album, called, named the album Batman. It was a Prince album called Batman. But the songs are awesome and they're great on there. You got the Party Man song, you got the Future song. Uh, I mean, it's just, you've got some seductive slow ones in there, scandalous, like when Vicki Vale finds Batman in the, in the Batcave, of course, which is one of my two complaints of this movie. One of two, and there's minor things, but anyways. Uh, I do think the Carl Grissom character, uh, no, nah, I'm not going to touch on that. Uh, but I mean, the movie is almost perfect. I mean, from, it's got some, is it, it's not flawless technically, it's got some technical things here and there. It was a movie made in 1989. But from a visionary standpoint, what they were going for and what Tim Burton had in his mind and what they really achieved, I mean, it, it was perfect. I don't think it ever really got achieved in originality again in the Batman movies. I think the Batman movies have been great. I think the Nolan movies are phenomenal. I think all in all, that, that as a group, that's my favorite. I had to choose. I would choose the Nolan trilogy. That's just awesome. But this movie is an amazing, fictional, fantasy, gothic depiction of a Batman character in a world that you never knew could exist. And like I said, from the moment you see the Warner Brothers logo, it transports you and takes you in. I mean, that opening scene. Uh, but And, 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 it, and it, it makes you feel like you're in real life in a real world, but not our, it's a slightly different feeling than our real world. Um, but again, I think that as a whole, almost a perfect film. What I really like about the character of Batman in this is you get to see the sneaky Batman. You know, in the beginning scenes, you get to see him, he's like real creepy and you know, he's getting guys from the shadows and stuff like that. And then he shoots that one guy with the wire and he's hanging. He's, let me down, let me down. Um, 
So you get to see that. You get to see the Save the Day Batman, like in the museum scene where he busts through the, the windows, and then it's right before Jack Nicholson says, Where did you get those wonderful toys? You get to see menacing Batman a little bit, you know, when he's coming up on Vicky Vale, when he's got her in the Batcave, and she's, like, trying to fool him, and he just, like, come, starts coming towards her. You get to see this, like, all these different sides of Batman, the detective side of Batman, when he's figuring out Joker's all of his different, you know, chemical toxin plans that he's got. You know, that's a whole detective side of him. You get to see the combat side of Batman when he's actually fighting in the, in the alley. Well, let's talk about the alley for a second. The alleyway fight scene is awesome. When the Batmobile, uh, oh, the Batmobile, let's talk about that too. When he's riding the Batmobile and then he has to stop, he gets out and he yells, shields. And then you see that. Shields. And then he runs away with Vicky Vale and they get into the alley. And then when they're in the alley, all these dudes start kind of fighting him and everything. And he's just doing some kind of cool, quick moves. But then everybody remembers this scene when the dude jumps out from behind the fence and he's got the swords. And he's like, ay, 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 ay. Yeah. That guy is awesome. And when Bruce Wayne just, I mean, excuse me, when Batman starts, just it's, I mean, as a kid and everybody else in the theater at that point, I know was like, oh my God. And for sure, that's like, dude, what about like, we were all doing that in the yard, playing like we could do Batman. So yeah, that scene was amazing. And then he just, you know, just knocks him down like that. Fantastic. And then, not only do you get to see the, the tech of the Batmobile and all that with the shields, but then he unlocks them and, you know, shields off or shields open. And then the Batmobile's remote control stops it way, his way to him. But then later on, you even get to see more tech with the balloon cathedral scene where Jack Nicholson's releasing all the balloons and the gases everywhere. And then all of a sudden, you just see the Batwing. And then you get to see the Batwing doing all its cool stuff. And you never, I never thought I was going to see the Batmobile, much less the Batwing together. And then Tim Burton just makes us all almost pass out. And it gives us that beautiful bat symbol with the circle around it and the moon. So it's just beautiful, man. I mean, I, I remember the chills that I got as a kid watching that. It was phenomenal. So yeah, Batman was probably my most influential film of all time. It's, some, it's, it's, I, it's not my favorite movie of all time. I know that sounds weird, but it is something probably my most influential because it just opened a world of Batman and film up to me that I just didn't know was a possibility uh, to be able to change characters around like that. Um, anyways, it, it's something that really did it for me for films. Batman, solid A+. Plus. If, you know, like I said, the Nolan trilogy would be my, you know, deserted island Batman. But there's a special place in my heart for this one, man. And I think that Keaton might be the best Batman just because he's the most, he's, it's believable and it's the least suspectable. So, like, you know, you look at the Bruce Wayne character, you don't think that he would be Batman. You don't think Michael Keaton could play Batman, but a lot of people don't think about the Bruce Wayne side. And I think that he looks like, not the Bruce Wayne that you saw in the comics, I'll give it that, but I think that it's believable because he seems smart, he seems like he wants to trick you. He's fooling you a little bit, that he's not that. You know, I think Ben Affleck's Batman, which I thought was phenomenal, amazing, uh, still, I think it's between him and Keaton, actually, which my two favorite ones are, but I do think that that, even as Bruce Wayne, he was badass. You know what I mean? He wasn't really like a, you know, he didn't walk the line between this guy and Batman. He was just Batman looking like Bruce Wayne. And, but I mean, I get it. That was sort of the Frank Miller approach to that character they did for the Zack Snyder Batman, which I love too. And we'll talk about that another time. But as a whole, Batman 1989, huge influence on my life. Uh, and I definitely would say A+. Plus. So you guys definitely check it out. 
please put some comments down below and start start rapping with me start chatting it up with me and let's create something here some relationships i want to be friends with you guys i'll see if i have what it takes and uh check out my reddit my twitter instagram facebook all that stuff rasper brothers we're going to start keeping it up on there and doing it some more well, thank you guys for watching this i really do appreciate it and look life gives you lemons make some hot fresh popcorn and watch a movie